Hi, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm Rashid, and this is Elasticsearch in Miniature. Uh, like I said, my name is Rashid Khan. I'm a developer at Elasticsearch. Uh, before I was a developer at Elasticsearch, I was an operations guy at a big chain of newspapers in the US. Uh, as a big chain of newspapers, we had a whole lot of web properties. Uh, in the course of setting those up, we tended to generate a lot of logs. Uh, we needed somewhere to put those logs. The place we chose to put them was Elasticsearch. So in that time, I, I ended up developing something that we're going to use briefly today called Kibana, but that's not really the point of this. Uh, we ended up, when we, when we acquired properties, you know, because we would buy and sell newspapers, we'd buy and sell their properties, we didn't always want to take their logs and put them into our, like, big logging infrastructure. And so I needed to be able to take Elasticsearch and run it on tinier systems, things that I could keep separate. And so I ended up throwing it on EC2 systems a lot. Well, I started with smalls, and those were cheap. I'm like, okay, so this works just fine. Can I put it on a micro? Well, it turns out you can run it on a micro instance. That's not to say that you should, but you can. It runs just fine. Uh, you kind of have to get tricky with, with some things. But uh, as long as you turn down the memory, it runs just fine. So when you tend to think of Elasticsearch systems, you think of them as dozens of nodes, uh, dozens of gigs of RAM, and dozens of cores, and you know, this big cluster of Elasticsearch systems. But there's really no concrete reason for doing that, right? It works, scale kind of works both ways. If you can scale up, there's an excellent chance you can scale back down, too. So I started wondering, well, what could I do with it? Now, before we talk about exactly what I ended up doing, let's talk about just a few of the terms we're going to use. I I'm guessing most people are familiar with Elasticsearch. But just to give you a broad overview of kind of the terms we're going to deal with, a document a single JSON document stored within Elasticsearch. This can be anything. It could be a log or a line of Shakespeare or something like that. Uh, documents are stored within indexes. Uh, an index is like a database in you know, the MySQL or something world. Uh, indexes are made up of shards. If you think of an index as a pie, a shard is like a piece of the pie. Shards come in two flavors. You've got your primary shards and your replica shards. Uh, your primary shards are where writes go first. If everything goes OK there, ends up at the replica shard. Great. Now, shards go on to nodes. When I talk about a node, a node is usually just an individual Elasticsearch process. Uh, in this case, when we talk about a node, we're talking about one of these guys. Yeah. These are Elasticsearch nodes. Uh, more specifically, they're Raspberry Pis. And as a group, they make up a Elasticsearch cluster. And if the demo gods are with us, they will work. <laughs> so there's actually two different topics, the two different uh, presentations that we could give today. Uh, this is either Elasticsearch in miniature, or why you shouldn't run uh, high, uh, why you shouldn't run distributed systems across a highly unreliable wireless network, which is what we're trying to do. Uh, of course, all this tends to work really well in testing, right? I get in a big empty room, and I put my access point out, I put my nodes out, and they're great. But then you put a whole bunch of people in a room, also known as signal blocking bags of water, and things can sometimes fall apart. So let's hope this goes OK. So just to give you an overview of what we're dealing with here, Grab one of these. Just to give you an overview of what we're dealing with, like I said, the Raspberry Pis. Uh, who has a Raspberry Pi? Yeah, that's, that's about what I figured. A, a lot of people. Um, who has found something really, really useful to do with their Raspberry Pi? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> so I also couldn't think of something useful to do with mine, so I decided to do something fun with mine. And I put a Raspberry Pi Elastic Search cluster together. So, what we've got here is a typical Raspberry Pi. When you buy a Raspberry Pi, you just get a board. The board is an ARM6 chip, 512 megs of RAM. Um, it's got Ethernet on it. It's got a couple of USB ports. But to do anything useful with it, you've got to add some useful stuff to it. So we added a battery. It's a 2600 milliamp battery. Powers them for about three hours. Um, added a screen. It's a HD44780 protocol screen. It hooks up to the GPIO headers on the Raspberry Pi. We added Wi-Fi. 
cabled the whole thing together, called it a day. So, if anybody wants to grab one, feel free. And by that I mean, please grab one. <laughs> yeah, just pass them around. Anybody have a live chicken or a live goat? Something we can sacrifice to the demo gods to, to make this work okay? Some incense, a lighter, nothing? Okay. I'm going to blame all of you if this fails for not bringing a live goat who comes to a conference without one. So, uh, if you happen to have one of those, uh, what does your screen look like? On your screen, you've got, a, uh, you've got the IP of the, the system you're dealing with. Off to the right of that is the Wi-Fi percentage. Uh, I implore you, the, the Wi-Fi hotspot is over there. It's an old phone of mine. If you see that number drop much below 50%, please pass it towards that screen, <laughs> or towards that phone. Um, on the second line, you'll have your cluster name. How many nodes are in the cluster? Uh, how many nodes are in the cluster, by the way? Yeah! <laughs> right. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, and you'll also have a status. Uh, what's the status on those, by the way? I say I'm doing this entirely blind. Green, that's good. OK, great. Um, you have the number of documents. And if I prepped all this right, it should say zero. If I still got a zero on there, all right. This is going well. Uh, on the bottom line, you've got abbreviations for our shard status. Like I said, shards are like pieces of the pie. And today, we're going to bake a pie. Um, right now, you've got no slices of pie. All right? You've got your, your PR, that's your primary shards. You've got replica shards is next, and relocating shards. All right, so like I said, this is Kibana. And this is a special panel I put together for it just to represent the state of the cluster in case you're not holding one of those little plexiglass things. Uh, so we've got, still got good, we've got our five shards in the cluster. Um, does anybody, anybody who hasn't already looked this up, can they guess what the names are? I, I, nobody in the front row is allowed to answer because you all work on this. Um, does anybody know what the names are? How Elasticsearch generates names? Oh, come on, room full of nerds. OK, so they're Marvel Universe characters. Uh, and those ones are really obscure. I've never heard of any of those. Uh, but every now and then, Spider-Man comes up, and that makes me feel slightly better. So we're looking at the cluster right now, and we've got a green state, which is about what we expect, because we haven't asked Elasticsearch to do anything in particular. Uh, the promise of what, what we've asked for is completely fulfilled by Elasticsearch. Right? We've asked it for nothing. It's given us nothing, so it says, well, we're doing great. So let's start giving it some data. OK, there we go. So what just happened? Well, we went to red, stayed red for a moment, went to yellow, and went to green. What just happened to, to the cluster? Well, has everybody heard of the, the, uh, the phrase, make it work, make it right, make it fast? That's kind of the principle that Elasticsearch operates on. Um, when, it's, when it's red, it's in the make it work stage, meaning I've asked you to do something, please do it as fast as you can and get me as close as you can to working. So it's red, it's distributing the primary shards where the writes go to first. Once it's got the writes there, all the primary shards are made, it can move on to the yellow stage of the, of, of the setup. So when it's in yellow stage, it's in the make it right stage. Well, I've gotten you as much as I can give you right now. Uh, now I need to give you everything that you've asked for. So you've asked me to create an, one index with uh, five shards and one replica. Great. I've done that. We've moved on to the green stage. Everything's good. We don't need to go into the make it fast stage right now because everything is evenly distributed. Let's go ahead and ask it for a little more, right? I've got quite a bit of capacity on here. I've got five nodes. Whoops. I don't know what would happen if I set shards to a negative number, or replicas to a negative number. That'd be scary. All right, let's give us some more replicas. So we're back in yellow because we've asked it for something that it couldn't fully fulfill. Once it's fulfilled it, we'll move on. Oh, you guys might be wondering, what data are we actually indexing here? Because, uh, you know, we've asked it to create an index, um, but we've actually asked it, we've done that kind of uh, implicitly. We've just said, here's some data, put it somewhere. So we are, in fact, indexing data. There it goes. 
If you're still wondering what kind of data we're indexing, uh, that's what we're indexing right now. They're hits to US government websites. Um, everybody's looking at me like I'm creepy now. Um, don't worry, that's from a completely legitimate source. Uh, if you've ever used uh, Bitly, Bitly publishes a stream of clicks through Bitly to US government sites. So we're just kind of pulling that down now. 42% uh, of them are to NASA. OK, so what happens if we kill a node? Well, let's kill a node and see what happens. Give it a second here to die. Come on, die. If that node's still reachable, I hope it is. Oh, we might have gotten too far away. Try a different one. You demo gods. If we can pass them closer, I don't know where they are. I've got one there. Where'd the other ones end up? See if you can get them a little closer. We'll see if it, oh, there they go. Okay, no, we're good. They're the close enough. Sweet. <laughs> All right, cool. So they died. And what just happened? Well, we went to, we went to yellow. Um, we went to yellow because we don't have, we lost a bunch of shards, right? We have to get those back out there. And so that's what we just did. Now, if only one of them had died at a time, what we would have seen is it go to yellow and then go to green. Uh, unfortunately, we killed two at a time, which I'm going to restart because they take a moment to restart. As you can imagine, these are very slow. If you've ever used a Raspberry Pi, they're not the fastest things in the world. It's a 700 megahertz processor and 512 megs of RAM. So it works, but it's slow. Uh, actually, the biggest bottleneck is the SD cards in them. Uh, write speed is somewhere on the order, at least on these, of about 12 megabytes a second. So not super great. OK, cool. So Elasticsearch started again. That's great. So anyway, what you would have seen is it go to green and then come to yellow. Well, the reason we're at yellow right now is because we can't fulfill the promise, right? I've asked for three replicas, and we've got three nodes, but we can't actually make three replicas on three nodes. Uh, that wouldn't make any sense. What we would end up with with a, a primary and a replica of the same data on the same node, um, and that's not any kind of redundancy. Well, that's not true. It's actually completely redundancy, but it's not functional redundancy. So we don't ever do it. And of course, we could have turned this down to just two replicas and been fine, but we want three. So what's happening now? Well, the nodes are coming back into the cluster. Now, you can see that we don't, while the other nodes have five shards, we don't actually have to create five shards on the new ones, right? Because we've only got a total of 15 shards in the cluster, and that's all we need to provide. So what's happening now is that we're redistributing the existing shards. And what we're trying to do first is, as fast as we can, get back to where we need to be, right? We need to get back to the point where we've got uh, we, we've got all the replica shards allocated and all the primaries. So you can see that 79 has only been allocated three, despite the fact that we've got you know, five on one, four on another, four on another. We didn't allocate them all at the same time. Once that other one's done allocating, which might take a while, like I said, uh, not the fastest things in the world. Oh, there we go. Now, once, we, we've, once we've completely allocated that, we can start on the make it fast. So see, we've still got a blinking shard there. That's a shard being allocated. The faded out one was one that was being relocated. So we moved on to the make it fast stage, where once we've completely fulfilled the promise to the user of getting them exactly what they want, we rebalance the cluster to try to make everything kind of equal. So there we go. We've completely rebalanced the cluster. Everything's OK. We've continued to index data. We had a brief hiccup there where we couldn't contact a couple of nodes, but it's not like anything fell out of the cluster or anything particularly detrimental happened. Everything continued to operate. Is this practical? Is it useful? Are you ever going to call your data center and say, you know, go ahead and get rid of that whole bunch of 4U machines and those a bunch of racks and fill it with a bunch of phone chargers and Raspberry Pis? Uh, no, you're never going to do that. Uh, the biggest impediment right now is A, they're slow, and B, even if you wanted to use ARM processors, uh, they only come in 32-bit right now, and that's just not going to cut it yet. We're probably still a couple of years away from 64-bit. That doesn't mean anybody has uh, stopped trying. There's companies out there that are pushing ARM servers right now. Um, 
HP, in particular, is pushing their Moonshot series, which is actually really cool. They can fit something like 1,800 nodes in a single, cluster, in a single rack. Um, it's anywhere from 80 to 90% as power efficient, uh, and four times as dense as you can normally fit into a server with this roughly the same amount of performance. So yeah, someday you might be hosting this on ARM, and you probably won't care because it's Java anyway and you won't notice. Um, one thing to note, if you are ever going to try to run Java on a Raspberry Pi, uh, grab JDK 8 uh, from Oracle. Uh, JDK 8 implements, uh, it, it supports the, uh, the hardware floating point unit on the Raspberry Pis, and that's much, much faster. Somewhere on the order of about 20 times faster in my testing. So, cool. We've still got a cluster and we're still indexing. That's about it. Any questions?